for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. 1 800 L O V E 191 is the phone number. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Uh, let me give out a, a phone number for you there, kitties, because uh, I'm doing this TV show and it's real intimate, Drew. You yeah. know, we're in the, uh, we're almost in the round. Have you started it yet? No. No. No, we're starting it this week, though. Oh. And the audience is, uh, Eh, 280 degrees around. Yeah. Maybe maybe getting close to uh, eh, maybe about 300. Almost almost a full circle. Mm-hmm. Very intimate. Very intimate. So here's the point. We only got about 80 people as opposed to the uh, big uh, big grandstand type audience thing. Yeah, yeah. I wanted no audience to be honest with mm. you, but they had nice to have to some have audience. It's nice to have one. It is, and I realize I want to talk to people and people ask yeah. questions yeah, and yeah. everything. But I, you, I you got you got to add you got you're playing to somebody there. You don't yeah, play the camera. I just didn't want a, a load of, of Filipino tourists. No, 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 uh, tripping yeah. into the place. Mm-hmm. So here's the point: I need people who uh, like me, like this kind of thing, and want to uh, be on camera, want to uh, ask a question, or just uh, hang out. But at least you got to be. It can't be between this and the Price is Right. You got to you got to get your audience. You know, you know what this is. I, this, I had to do this. this I remember, is a I had small. To... Oh yes, this is small acoustic set. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm playing McCabe's. Yes. You know, I'm just. I, I need. I need my audience. So you just call eight six six five four six sixty nine eighty four eight six six five four six sixty nine eighty four, and uh, I'll get a little message machine and get your name in there. I think uh, I, I reshot some stuff without an audience, and I really missed it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like just did, doing on on the stage. I just I actually just did it right here. Just in, it's just oh, a, you did man on the it's, it's just oh, sort of it in the studio the interstitial right. stuff over here. Yeah, and it's just like eh, fah. you know, just like it's like why even do it? You know, it's yeah, not something but, to interact with. Yeah, but speaking of fah, get a crappy audience in there. Oh no, <laughs> and then it's fah fah. Then it's fah 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 fah. All right, so we call that, and I, I think that's the audience number for Jimmy Kimmel Live and uh, Carson Daly Show and that stuff, too, but you'll uh, hear my name on there and you come see Hey, it. how many times have you seen me wear sandals? To, look at this. See this? Drew. Oh, look at this. Flip-flops, that's baby. Why. Looking good. What happened look to your at that. toe? Look at that. Drew looked like he got clipped with a lawnmower on his big toe. That's about what happened. And is there, is there anything worse than, oh. than nail trauma? No, that's why they use that for torture. Yeah. It's just, a, your yeah. whole body reacts. Yeah. I'd rather uh, I'd rather oh. get shot in the ass with a pellet gun than have anything oh. happen to my big toe, and the oh. nail especially. Oh you pansy! What happened, Drew? It's running on the beach. There's a huge boulder under there. As I just was, kicked just, it, just full, just, just full, drove into just, it, and it was immediately like, uh oh. Do yeah. I have a, th- a, a, a toe left? Oh, you weren't wearing shoes. No, I was running. You know, well, running to get, you get it was hot. It was, I was, no, it was hot, and no. I was running to go get that off was, the beach. That was God telling you not to burn I, I wasn't extra. I was getting off the heat. Oh, you're, you're hustling off yeah, the beach. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's too hot. You know, getting off, like, running on coals, and then boom. Oh. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Now, did you dig the rock up and dispose no, of because, it? No, because no, it was, no, no, because guy? it was a huge boulder. Oh, really? Was, I'd, I'd run into something that had been was covered under the sand, so it's yeah. really ridiculous. Bad times. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you got to sue the man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just realized, you oh. know, stubbing the toe is something you remember very vividly from your childhood. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen so much as you get older. Oh. It's really, it's one of the only, one of the only good things about getting older is not stubbing your toe. Yeah. But when you do, it brings you back. The other thing is you age, your, your tissues aren't as resilient and strong. You stub your toe and you're a kid, you just sort of, you just sort of slit. No, yeah. this toe like splits in half. Yeah, the Drew, whole toe yeah. Drew got open. a nosebleed. Yeah. Huh. No, listen. Are you? Are you? I had one of my nephews punch me in the nuts <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> and the thing about getting hit in the nuts is oh. getting hit in the nuts is like when a guy gets hit by the pitcher at the plate. Eight out of ten, they hit the guy in the ass cheek. They hit the guy in the thigh. They catch the pubic guy in the meaty part. No, not the pubic bone. Oh, I see. oh yeah, pubic bone. Right. Yeah, anywhere, yeah. anywhere I'm, near I'm there. On, I'm, I'm just talking about the mound. I see. I'm just talking about batting. It always looks bad. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it hits a guy in the shoulder, the meaty part of the yeah. back, and he yeah. just jogs it off. But every yeah. once in a while, he takes one right in the face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what the, that's what this is. And it's hard to tell from the pitch. It's just 
it's hard to tell which one would have caused damage and which one wouldn't, but for some reason they end up walking away. It's like hits in the NFL. Yeah. The ones that cause the fractures, they don't look any different. Spectacular, it's spectacular hits spectacular with the guy ones, spinning over their head. guy up. gets up and shakes it off nine times out of ten. And then something stupid where he tar- tears a bunch of ligaments and turns his ankle, that's nothing. Yeah. That's just rolling out. No one even hit him. Right. Right. Okay. That's what getting hit in the nuts by your nephew is like. <laughs> Guys, pound kids, nephews pounding on me, <laughs> socking me, doing the novelty, dropping elbows and knees on me. But one shot catches the ball on the thigh bone and gets <laughs> it gets mashed between the five year old fist and the femur. You oh, know? you got all that prodigious sack hanging around oh, too, so it's, it's easy. Yeah, it's no. easy to get caught in the way of no. like, any flying fists. You can't, you can't miss. Oh yeah, you can't. You, oh, can't you should wear miss. a cup when you play with your nephews. Well, I am now. Okay, at least over the one ball. Uh, well, I want just a half cup. Well, I'm going to leave the other ball out. I, I, I don't with, believe with the cups in, that you can buy at the sporting goods store. I don't think that's they will not accommodate both, more than one one ball. Saying. Oh, oh, I see. Right. So at least the injured one now is right. going to be protected. Yeah, I don't need a cup. I need a tumbler. <laughs> I need a schooner down there. Oh boy, that's yeah. a good thing to drink beer out of. Everybody. Schooner, a schooner, <sighs> big glass, thick yeah. glass, cold schooner. Yeah. Let me tell you. Drinking beer is good, beer but what you drink beer out of is better. Going to the ball, gum, ball game and drinking out of a styrofoam sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, but a big glass mm-hmm. schooner. That's why the Germans invented those huge steins. Yeah. They got into that whole thing. Smart. Those hey, crowds. Chris Perez. Chris Perez is yeah. the news. What about Engineer Chris? What happened? Did you graduate? You got accepted to something? What happened? Yeah. I, you yeah. got laid? I got an AA, dude. You got an AA. Yeah. And, and what right. else? What else? What Tell else? us. What oh, else? we can't talk about it. He's no, I... I can talk about it. I got a, I got a full time job. Oh wait, Turn I got a full time <laughs> job, Anderson. <laughs> it's ironic that his accomplishments were crapped on by Anderson's calls of "Turn your mic." Thank you, up. Anderson. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think what? he's just saying that actually. Yeah. I, he, I, he could, he could be. Yeah, yeah. No, go man, ahead. You're talking, what? you're talking like this. Yeah. Okay. What happened? But he's got. He's, he's on. First he's off, on Anderson. Roll. He's an on-air talent. He told me that many years ago. Go ahead. Yes, Chris. I am. Go ahead. What's well, going on? I found a full-time job. Doing what? I'm in the communications department. Where? At a, at a hospital. At a hospital. He's yes. gonna be the guy that I call. Go. 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 No. Yeah, I'll be filled in Doctor Drew's calls. <laughs> really? Yes. But you. You're, you're, but if there's like a fecal matter uh, no, no, in no, the no. hall on no, the mezzanine no. level, you're not going to be making no, those no. calls. No, no, no. He's just no cleanup the, aisle five. He sits at the desk, handles the code yellows and the code blues. And the, did you get yeah. him that gig? No. What's the difference between code blue and code yellow? I'll have to use your imagination. Well, code blue. yellow is a, is a trauma. trauma yellow is trauma. Yeah, and code blue is a arrest, cardiac arrest. Oh, really? What's Ouch. worse? Depends how well, bad well, the code yellow you, is. What would you want? I code, code yellow because code yellow can, can be nothing. Your toe be, could be code, code yellow. No, my could have been. I mean, really, if if I'd fallen and just bonked my head, that code would yellow. be code yellow. Yeah. All right, code blue. So, um, yeah, this will be my last couple of days, but I'm gonna try and stay for uh-huh. at least one day. But that's up to you know, powers that be. Yeah. So this is your last couple of days here on the air, right? And Ooh. then you're you're going to the hospital. Yeah, that's correct. Wow. Yeah. Who might be replacing you? Yeah, who's oh, going to be replacing you? Sound so you? Enthusiastic about things. Well, you don't replace engineer. Yeah, you don't replace me, Anderson. Chris, you you step up from engineer, Chris. You don't <laughs> replace. <laughs> now, who is going to replace you? Oh, honestly, I don't know. Oh, oh okay. probably Michelle. Or all right, probably what? Michelle. What? Michelle. What? All right. Yeah, Anderson hates Michelle. It's. Uncanny. I'd ask why, but he doesn't really need a reason, so it's not worth uh, getting into it. But he he loves to play that uh, weird shut up thing every uh, time. She talks on the air with Shut up! Shut horribly, up! I horribly, said shut up! Horribly annoying to me. Who was but that? I'm done. Who was that? SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. We will... Uh, seems like... Sh- oh, I miss you, Anderson, he, he, uh, yelling at me. He must, have, she, he must have recorded that a few years ago when he was on this show. Yeah. SpongeBob. All no, right. What? We, it was like that, a month ago. The crazy shut up thing? Yeah, it was like a month ago. Yeah, but you've been playing it... As it as it pertains to uh, no, Michelle, he has, he has a different, what, what feels different, like years. To he has me. a different shut up. Oh, a different shut yeah. up. Yeah, yeah oh, I, okay. I used to That's play from the David Ingram. Clown Posse, right? Play, uh, play, play the other one. I'm I'm used to hearing that. Let's see. Want to hear okay. all my shut ups? Are good. Well, I like to hear the one you used to play. Shut up! That's see? Dad. Oh, that one. Oh, damn it! Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut up! I think he plays Dad shut more. Up. Yeah, yeah. Shut up! Just yeah. shut up! All right. Wow. That's either Drew or Hal. Shut up! Lesbian. All right. That's the one. All right. 
<laughs> Anderson <laughs> hates <laughs> Michelle. And here's the whole thing. I have no idea why, why Engineer Anderson uh, hates Engineer Michelle, and I don't care. That's the whole thing. And I know Drew feels the same way. He has no idea and doesn't care either. Just uh, one it's of those things you have to endure. It? Now, I, I really I really don't know, but I really don't care. Do you care. like me, dude? No, I love you, Chris. All right. I love you, too. All right. Let's, uh, let's just, Chris, you'll be missed. Thank you. And I'm going to try and stay. Please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, he, please. He's mastered. Please he's mastered my technique. It's fantastic. <laughs> Two years of sitting next to the uh, master. The, I learned the, from the master. Well, he's the grandfather of Mike Puncher. Oh That's my gosh, Doctor Drew. There's whole Chris. Technique I'm so named. impressed. It was well delivered. I didn't know he'd been practicing. <laughs> he socked the mic, and you know, I have so much passion. Uh, right, uh, right on the key syllable too. So you lost it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, you'll be missed. Mazel tov. Congratulations yeah. on that AA degree. Thank you. Well earned. And I know I made a lot of fun of you, but, you know, I was just it's trying to just, right? I was trying to motivate you. Yeah. And, and, and evidently, and it's And got him a job, too. And got him a Did He's you out? get him a job? No, I didn't. He got it himself. How did he get that job? Mm-hmm. He went out there and the pounded, the, pounded the pavements. Really? Mm-hmm. This, kid's got, this kid's got it, Adam. You said wow. it all along. All right. All right. The internet did. All right. He'll be moving out of mom's house. Oh, oh three or four years. No, four or five years. No problem. <laughs> Over under is forty one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Get a new. He's gonna get trucks. Gonna move out of mom's house. Gonna get late. It's got, gonna be got awesome. Got benefits too. This thing. The job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, free medical. That is if, you, if it happens on, on the, the job. Yeah. yeah. Nick. Yeah. Seventeen. Yes. What's up? Uh, I'm I'm fairly disappointed about Anderson leaving, but we got to get down to business. My Anderson's not leaving. A- Anderson right is not leaving. Yeah, to be clear, no, that's not, I'm no, disappointed. That no, Chris is leaving. Oh, Chris, Chris is leaving. leaving. Engineer Chris. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay, that's okay. It's good to know. This is. Hey, hang on a second, Nick. But this we wonder why people when they call us have a skewed understanding of what we've been speaking about. Yeah. You know, we we talk about little headier things than Chris leaving. And they call saying, how dare you say that? Because, of course, it's their experience and it's, it's about them, so they can't be objective. They misinterpret about us. Yeah, they misinterpret yes. us. Yes, but this is just talking about Chris leaving. They just get the we, person We just wrong. did 10 minutes on Chris leaving, and uh, Nick's going to miss Anderson. All right. All right. Sorry. All right, buddy. Anyway. Go ahead. Um, well, my girlfriend, um, she um, talked me into shaving my, my balls. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up cutting myself. And mm-hmm. like, it's a pretty good it's it's a pretty good gash, mm-hmm. yeah. like a half inch in yeah. length. It's yeah. a, like a scrape. Yeah, like, he's like fine. You, yeah, it's, he's fine. But how long? Wait, wait, wait. What's the difference between your sack and your forehead? Oh, it's a lot different. Really? It's a different kind of skin. Really? Porous. You've you tried it yourself. Put the calcium on the forehead. Put the calcium on the nuts. Oh, I have gotten gasoline on my nuts before. Yeah, it's different than the forehead, right? Yeah. Probably shouldn't have been smoking at the time either. Yeah. Yeah, look, well, it's no big deal. Well, it's, he's it's, fine. Unless it gets infected or something. Well, everything. What? Everything yeah. can get infected. He's fine. Uh, he's an idiot. I don't want to talk to him. He's got uh, no question. Uh, look, uh, clean it out and keep it dry. Melissa? See, obviously, Hi. see a doctor if it's... Uh, You're 18? Infected. Yes. Yeah, if it gets um, infected. It won't heal, yeah. We can't no, do, what are we going to do over the radio? That's bogus. He's got nothing. All right, it's Melissa. Nothing. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay, I've been chosen over a guy with a gash on his nuts. Great day. Um, okay, first of all, Adam... Luckily, I Adam didn't hear that. No, I did. Okay, go ahead. Okay, first of all, um, I do want to say that I agree with you from, I don't know, it's probably a couple weeks back. We said that people have to be hungry to really fully appreciate what they get later on. I totally agree with that. Um, Thank you, because okay. we're just talking about that 11 days ago. And that's not exactly yeah, what we said, either. I, I have, have no not idea. To, we didn't say they need to be hungry to appreciate it. So they need to be hungry to go get it? Yeah. Okay. So anyway. Well, okay. Um, yeah, more important things. Um, okay, so, all right, I was abused. All right. Who well, she was going to go in she was abused. I know, I can tell. Come I on, can... get it over with. It's just that take your medicine. That horrible cadence. I know, and that's why you that's why you want to abuse her. I don't Let's want to abuse can... her, I just want to move on. <laughs> well you have you've evolved. Well she's been, you just, you're just she, shutting them out instead of talking, starting to yell she's at been them. Talking for a minute and and said anything yet. All right. Let's ask about my book. No. We got we got well, speaking of a cadence, we gotta get something rolling here on this go, show. Baby. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay. Um I'm like head over heels for this guy at work. He's thirty two years old though. Yeah, and fabulous. I know this has something to do with my abuse because there's no other way I can be attracted to a guy who's almost twice my age. Yes. Well, um, 
Uh, you're offending Adam, but yes, you're well, right. Well, no. I mean, there's... Well, hey, yes. Look, there's 18-year-old girls who w have crushes on 32-year-old guys all the time if he's a desirable 32-year-old yes, guy. Uh-oh, did you sleep with a guy? Yeah, um, and that's oh. part of the issue. Actually, that's the entire issue. I um, I cry afterwards every time, and it's really weird for him because he's like, holy shit. That I do. Oh, I'm oh not Melissa, to... fantastic. So glad. I Very self-aware, evolved, all right, beautiful on. use of language. <laughs> Poetic. It's one thing when you're... All right. All right. She just dropped the S-bomb, so I have to put her on hold. Uh, she was abused. Now, wait a minute, Drew. Yeah. There are 18 No, you're right. No, you're right. Your point well taken. And I, sleep with 32-year-old yeah. guys. Not this 32-year-old guy. I'm sure this guy's a mess. Right. This guy's got to be something that reminds her of the abusive person that uh, nailed her way. Yeah. If, if you're like the uh, good-looking boss guy drives the... Uh, How old is Brad Pitt? 40. Right. Okay. 39 so or go. whatever. Yeah. Right. If he was, you're over at Kinko's and Brad was uh, your boss, yeah. showed up in a tight T-shirt one day... <laughs> and you were 18, you'd be all over him. Right. Especially if he's the boss. Yeah. Now, the deal is, though, that uh, she was sexually abused, so she is going to be attracted to abusive people and older people. And, of course, it's a reenactment when she uh, engages, when she indulges this, these attractions. Right. And, yeah, naturally enough, there's oh, flesh flashbacks and overwhelming feelings. Why don't you back off the relationship and work on some therapy instead of this relationship? That's really the only answer here. There's nothing else we can really do. Mm -hmm. Melissa. Yes, sir. You don't cuss, baby. I know. I really Which, screwed that up. I'm sorry. But I but here's that. the thing. That's all right. That's all right. Here's Shut what up. I've re here's what I've realized. When here's here's how people cuss. They start speaking quickly, and then their words get out ahead of their brain, and then an F or an S bomb flies out. So just right. okay. we'll just be I'm slow, sorry. plotting, and methodical with our answers. If I do that, sometimes you'll hang ooh, up on ooh, me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Shh. See now, Slow you started down. spinning a little there, baby. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I don't know what. Like I'm, I'm so confused because I don't want to be attracted yeah. to him because I know it will get right. weird because I work with them and that's already gotten okay. weird. Okay, all right. Well, hold on, hold on, Melissa. And by the way, the other way to uh, cast is to start getting upset or frustrated when you're speaking. <laughs> so. uh Slow, okay. slow that one down a little well, too. Well, you understand that this is an unhealthy choice for, for many different reasons. It's yeah, it's normal. That let's you know, normal's not the right. It's understandable that here. it's understandable that you would have boundary problems and you would engage in these things given your history. Who now, abused you? My father. For how long? Four years. Yes. Okay, sexually abused. Yes. Okay, and do um do you do you have you don't have any kids, do you? No. Good. I'm, right, I'm so not doing that for a long, long time. Is good. That right. Right. Now, some people have sort of resiliency with these things and kind of can kind of make it through okay, can mm, persuade themselves to get into a healthier relationship, can put, you know, stop something like this and try to get in something healthier. If you can't, it's time for therapy. That's it. There's, there's nothing we can say that makes that different. Yes. You had horrible abuse. There's mm. treatments for that. It's yes. natural that you be attracted to abusive and older guys having been through what you went through. It's natural to have flashbacks and overwhelming feelings associated with sexuality, particularly an older male. Mm -hmm. Nothing, no amount of convincing, it's not an intellectual process. No amount of talking is going to sort of convince you out of that. It's not a right. thought problem. No. It's like, it's like being burned horribly and thinking about doing rehab. Right. No, you got to get in that pool and get those weights on and start r running on there, going the, to the treadmill I, or whatever you have I to do. I got to drives me crazy. Go, I talked to high school uh, sort of uh, teachers and high school principals who go, oh, yeah, oh, no, we have girls like Melissa. We'll, we'll teach her that that's a bad thing. We'll show her that's a bad yeah. thing. To, no, all the showing and teaching and understanding in the world is not going to change the drive, the motivations, and the fact that yeah. they do these things. Well, it's weird, too. Uh, you know, oftentimes we have guests in the studio that sort of chime in with these sort of retarded aphorisms where they uh. go, like, you have to want to change. Uh. And it's like, I, you know, I don't want to be rude because the guy's a big director, a big actor, <laughs> big whatever, but I want to go, like, uh, yes, your, your retardness. Could you <laughs> please, please shut up for a second? Your give, retardness. We give the director's some, like that guy over there? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> give some real, real advice here for a second. Yeah. And you've got to want to change, or you've got to be ready for change, or it's up to you to change, or I, this... This all true, means nothing. but it means all, nothing. All true yeah. means nothing. And there's this weird thing that's going on in our society 
where everyone is interested in saying things that no one can really question. Right. And you, also, no one can really do anything with it. No one can do it. You can't do anything with it. But you saying, look, uh, you can change, but you've got to want to change, is like saying the greatest, the best, well, hangover, number one hangover tip. Don't ta- drink. Don't drink. Yeah. Don't drink. That's it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's very helpful. Very, very helpful. helpful. What else do you have for me? Yeah. What, uh, what other tips? What other, whatever, what other safety tips do you have for things I, I can't engage in? Right. Oh, be- best, best way, best, the uh, best sunblock. Is uh, not going out in the sun. Oh, th- yeah. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. That's well awesome. Said. Beautiful. Awesome stuff. Not going to the sun. Safe, safest form of travel? Stay at home. Stay at home. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I knew that one. Thank you, Jack Fantastic. Off. Yeah. You have anything else? Any other pearls of wisdom for me, you idiots? Hey, you got to want to change. Hey, you just got to take it easy. Hey, best way to quit smoking, Drew? Never pick up that cigarette in the don't, first don't place. Don't start. Don't start. Yeah. Thank you. I'll Thank tell all my heroin addicts that. They should just pick, never awesome. pick the needle in the first yeah. place. Best way. Oh, you guys. You guys want to know the best way to uh, quit chasing the dragon? Never pick up the rig in the first place. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Thanks. Fantastic. Awesome. I'll mention that to the abusive, uh, sexual abusive parents, too. Yeah, hey. That's- yeah, you guys. Best way, to, <laughs> best way to cope with sexual abuse? Don't get abused in the first place. <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome. We can build a time machine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, your royal anus. Or choose Thank to you. get over it. Choose to get. No, you got to choose to get over it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Boy, that is awesome. So easy. I wonder why everyone isn't just doing it left and right. Why isn't everyone doing everything? Everyone should just be just, doing everything. Because otherwise well, you it's your fault. You, you didn't choose, choose to. You, you choose to, to choose. be different way. You have to choose. Like, I choose to be a blowhard. <laughs> Who has no actual information. You see, I made that decision. You need to choose to deal with the abuse. You need to choose to get off heroin. I choose, I choose, you know, my, I, I choose to spit out worthless isms on the radio that really have no You must no choose that because that's society. what you do. It's your that's choice. That's what I choose. I must choose to be a blowhard celebrity. <laughs> Sean? Hey, what's up? Adam? You're 16? God. Yes. Adam? Corolla. No, oh, listen. Yeah. Hold yeah, on, hang a, on a second. Hold on and a second. And people have this wrong, Sean. You've offended the master. Look, we're changing the game Marco Polo, and we're replacing it with Adam Corolla. So you don't say, Marco. Yeah, you, don't, you don't swim around a pool with your eyes closed and go, Marco. <laughs> you go, Marco. Marco. Polo. Marco. Polo. Fish out of water. Yeah. Now so it's you do it. Adam. Corolla. It's the same thing. Right. Nine out of ten people, and God bless them, their heart's in the right place. They're trying to move us along. But nine out of ten people call up and go like, uh, mm-hmm. Adam. You know, Adam. Or they go, it's, it's weird. It's like if my dog could talk, that's what it would sound <laughs> like. It's sing-songy. And we're kind of confused. Like, yes, yes. Sean, you got to do it sing-songy. Adam. Girl, uh, not okay. the right pitch. Still, 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 it's yeah. a, the A is higher. Yeah, you're Adam, right. Adam, okay. Adam, Corolla. There you, you see, go. See, that's how it goes. Sorry about All that. Right. Sean, you don't have a pool, do you? No. Uh, I have a friend that has a pool. Uh, yeah, that's but, yeah. not. That's like having a friend that's got a girlfriend. <laughs> it's nothing. I mean, she's still got nothing. That's worse. All right, what's up, Sean? Uh, yeah. Um, first off, wanted to say, Adam, a big follower of you. Uh, I praise you. every word that you Thank say. You. Thank you. I'm, I'm important. Yes. Yeah. Go are. ahead. Um, uh, uh, so, Adam, you're a god. Drew, passionate, passionate man. Thank you. <laughs> passionate, passionate. Anyway. Um, yeah. First off, uh, back to the say, point. Uh, I read your book, Cracked. Yeah. And I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, cool. I was wondering, uh, what book next would you recommend? Mm. If you're interested in uh, addiction? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, that or what? Tell me what you're interested in exactly. Um, just like I, I would look more into um, the the more path of how addiction is began and. <sighs> all right, Drew. I'm bored already. No, it's it, because that's a fact. That the material is sh- so boring. Shoot that, him an email. No, no, no. Let me think about this. Well, I wrote I think, an. All right, I wrote another book. Oh, no, no, no. no listen, didn't ask for and, and I mean yours. this. I mean this because it, it really was meant to sort of flush out some of the stuff I brought out in that book. It's called. When painkillers become dangerous, mm-hmm. and if that interests you, I, I would you got to kill yourself. I would look into 16. the work of Alan Shore, S C H O R E, and Peter Fonagi, F O N A G I, and uh, those aren't books that they, but they publish articles, and you can sort of read there. So Pon Fonagi has a book, so but All it's right. not exactly eye candy. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, he's sixteen. He's coming from Ohio. He doesn't even ridiculous. have a pool. All right, let's, All take, right, a let's take a break. Yeah. Let's take a break. When we come back, Katie.
Yeah. Unprotected uh, oral sex a week ago. How soon do STDs uh, show up? I'm going to give my number out one more time. If you want to come see me. <laughs> we'll talk of STD. And then, yeah. Yeah, call me. Call me at, uh, this come see my, uh, see me tape my uh, Comedy Central show, 866-546-6984. 866 6984. We'll be right back with uh, young amorous Katie after this. Love line will be right back. Love line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Yeah, it's Love Line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Doctor Who. Dr. Drew. Eddie Griffin is coming in here later on in the week, and then Pennywise in studio. All right, Drew. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the phone number. Had unprotected oral sex a week ago. Should we pay that, play that Pennywise thing to sort of set up nah, that show? Do it later in the right. week. Do Katie? Adam. Corolla. Oh, thank you for See, that's how you yeah. do it. Thank well you. Go oh, ahead, I, Katie. I, I, yeah. What's up, baby doll? Well, I had unprotected oral sex a week ago, and it was someone with someone that I didn't really know that well, though we'd been talking for a while, but we didn't talk about sexual history and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. This was both receiving and uh, giving? It was giving. giving. Mm -hmm. You giving. And was there anything? Man, I, I got to tell you, I, if there was some sort of chart. Time machine? <laughs> well, time machine, yeah. Time machine's like... How uh, how many roofies can I stuff into this backpack? How many condoms can I get in this backpack? How much ether can I get? All right, I'm going. Oh, I need some puka shells. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, uh, uh, what else? A TiVo. I'm going to freak everyone out. <laughs> Although, thank God the TiVo wasn't invented 20 years ago because we'd just been we're just watching, you know, Hal Fishman on Channel 9. You, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, what, yeah. what, what, what would you have TiVo'd? Nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. nothing TiVo, yeah. There's nothing on. You go backward and forward on the SLA uh, assault. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, about it. Yeah. Of course, no one knows what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. No, Chris does. He's a, he's a college grad. The Simeonese Liberation Army? Yeah. Remember that Hearst, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Hearst. Indubitably. <laughs> wow. What the hell happened there? I'll tell you something. Graduate that paper. You know, yeah. Yeah. Wizard of Oz. You know, that little paper. Changed. That's all it was. Just that... Uh, Sheepskin? What do they call that? Sheepskin. Sheepskin. Yeah, he's he's like the lion. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, the Tin Man. Who didn't have the brain? The uh, the Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Who he's... then Im immediately recited the Pythagorean theory wrong? Oh, it was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's three, four, five, right? What? The Pythagorean theory. That's uh... I use it when I was when I used to build. No, that's the that's, that's the, the square of the sides. Yeah, but that that that's for squaring up things. Was just finding a distance in a hypotenuse. Yeah, but here's here, when you're build, right angle. when you're building a house. He said if it was an isosceles triangle, angle the Wizard of Oz. Ah, and it's for a right angle. Triangle. Uh huh. It is for a right angle. A triangle. right triangle. Yeah. Yeah, it is because isosceles is just like a pyramid, right? Yeah, with two equal right. sides. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a right angle because when you're building, poor Katie, <laughs> when you're when you're building a house. You have to, you know, you got one wall going down one way, and then you turn the corner, and you got the other wall. How do you know they're square? Right. I don't know they're not pinched in or bowed out or mm -hmm. whatever. You just, uh, you can't, there's no tool for it, really. You have hmm. to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem there. Plus which you is, just measure this distance here. You go, sure you go, you go, you go three, you go three foot this way yeah. or six foot this way. You yeah. go eight, four foot or eight foot that way. Mm -hmm. And then you got to go ten foot or five foot across. It's right. called three, four, five. I see. Interesting. Yeah. But what, what that is, is, All right. th listen, wait, this squared plus this squared Mm -hmm. Is the square root of that squared? Now, well, I just knows you when that when that gets when that's three foot and that's four foot. That's got to be five foot, and that's when you're square. Mm -hmm. Speaking of squared, pops, Katie. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you're 20. You gave oral sex. Correct. Now here's all I'm saying. This is what I wanted to say. Uh, the the instances of guys just getting oral in today's age is much higher than it used to be course. That's why you'd need the time machine again. Yeah, you didn't know any guys you went to high school with that just got a BJ. No way. Just went on a date and had a BJ. Now, they may have gotten a BJ as part of the overall sex package because they had a girlfriend or later. because they got lucky. Way later. But you know a guy just went out and got blown. No. 
So in a way, it's part of sort of how things are shaking out. Really, there's all been, no, really, it's all been sort of an evolution since basically we got control over contraception. Yeah. That's when things started changing. Well, to me, the, the whole AIDS thing was a windfall for fans of the BJ. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. That was our greatest day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that uh, moved things in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hats off, yes. Hats off to AIDS is what uh, <laughs> the BJ yeah. fans say. Awesome. Go ahead, Katie. Well, I would say for me, it's a more of an insecurity thing where it's something that I can do with someone and not have to be completely exposed myself. No, it's, it's that's what I'm talking about. It's diabolical, Katie. It, don't, it, don't worry. It, it, AIDS, AIDS was the driving force behind you feeling this way. Yeah. I, you see, or, or, you know, you we're creating this so. option. But this look, option wouldn't have been on the table had it not been for HIV. Katie is 20. Yeah. She's been hit over the head with this since age five. Yeah. Hopefully six or seven. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. AIDS, you know, 15 yeah, yeah. years old. Yeah. A little more, right? Yeah. Coming on to 20 years old. So her whole time on this planet, people have been saying, if you have unprotected sex, if you transmit whatever. So her thing is like, I'll just give a guy BJ. Also, it gets the guy for back. It's diabolical. Yeah. It just puts takes the wind out. Yeah. It gets her off her back, too. All right, Katie. So, well, for me, it was something that I wanted to do, but I'm a virgin, and I didn't want to lose my virginity. So it was awesome. something that I could still do and enjoy because mm. I did enjoy doing it. Let me and say yet, this, too, Drew. Hold on. You know, people always talk about the baggage of having sex with a virgin. The baggage, yeah. Of having sex with a virgin. Yeah. Not their inexperience. Maybe there's blood. You could be their first. You, you know, I mean, you are the first. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> well, a lot, really lot of comical. our folks, their uncle raped them That's before what I'm you saying. got to them. But I, still think, I still think of them as a virgin. Yeah. But my point is, is there's baggage that goes along. Yes. They're not going to be great in the sack. There could be well, some also, bleeding. They could get they're really gonna get clean. Attached, yeah. They're going to get attached. Who wants to deal with it, especially if it's the kind of thing where you're not planning on staying around right. for the long haul? Right, you're, you're hurting somebody if you do that. Getting a BJ from a virgin, Bottom however, has has all the, the great trappings of the virginity part with uh -huh. none of the baggage. Uh -huh. You know, it has all, it's all the upside of the Vent virgin. Is upside for Katie, apparently. She feels okay about it. But the idea of a, of a virgin giving you a BJ is, is, is that's good for 10 wax right there. <laughs> Forget about just the actual BJ. And you get off free. Scott free. You walk. Katie? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. You got. You need to understand how guys' minds work, Katie. You really do. Yeah. Well, I and the whole, the whole I virgin. It was, that, it was not something that he pressured or initiated in any way. It was something that I initiated and that I wanted to do because Ooh. it's something that mm -hmm. I've wanted to do for a long time. I've been mm -hmm. sexual from a very young age, so uh -oh. it's something that. What I does that mean? What does that mean? Um, yeah. You know, I've really and I've been listening to your show forever, so I've really thought about my past and that kind of thing. And I've never been sexually abused or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I've never. What, been, what do you mean you were sexual? What does that mean? Like, I started masturbating at a very, very young age before, excuse me, before I was exposed to anything. Well, really usually that, mean, that usually means uh, when a kid yeah. is doing it in sort of in the uh, prepubescent, particularly early childhood, that means chaos in the home. Are, are you? That, I mean, that's the way kids try to self-regulate, self-soothe with that, and they just sort of automatically that, go that, that direction. May ha that may have been. Yes. Um, I, had, I, I have a very a stable home. My parents are still together, all that kind of stuff. Um, but? Hmm. Well, maybe like I don't. I'm not really sure what it was. It was something that kind of I just started exploring, and it was something that I enjoyed and didn't even right. really necessarily right. understand. Right. And some, I was never some, exposed. Some all right, whatever. Anything, so all right, right, right. I'm not really. Right, I didn't say exposed. I said let chaos. Me, let in the me home. say. Let I'm, me say this, Drew. I, you know, I'm starting to realize that people have certain capacities that yeah. show, they show themselves early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talents, yeah. music. Yeah. Yes. Uh, adventure, thrill seeking. Yes. Whatever, for good or for bad. They start showing themselves yep. at a very early age. Yes. Why not sexuality? You know I, what I mean? It's possible, but I'm just saying, more often than not, when kids early do that, because it, it's not biologically in the cards usually. Right. It, it's uh, usually as a way of self-stimulating. It's sort of self-soothing. But there's, there's, right. a lot of, there's a lot of other behaviors that show themselves early that, don't, that seem to be atypical biologically, but yeah. yet these kids yeah, start yeah. showing those signs right, early. Right, I'm not right. saying she's going to be a porn star. But no, 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 not at all. All right. So but Katie, I understand where Drew is coming from because I've really thought about it a lot and been concerned about that because I've mm -hmm. seen that in friends of mine and that kind of thing. And so All I've right. really thought about it a lot. And All right. just, you, uh, you, you right, don't worry about it. It's are, fine. are you a big gal? Um, relatively. I've always been bit. very athletic, but it's I'm kind of genetically disadvantaged right. in that. Hold on a second. Hold on. When I heard it initiated the BJ, 
Pow. I put 50 pounds on her ass right there. I hate to be sad, but when I hear initiate BJ, <sighs> you know what I'm saying? I hear you. When she I think she wanted to do when it. When I just go out and get a BJ and don't get anything returned, oh. that's, that's 20 pounds overweight. When I hear initiate the BJ, mm. now we're at 50. Mm. That's yeah, all. Well. Off to my head. Athletic, yes, Kenny? Correct. Tough ge- bad genetic hand, though. Fat parents. Yeah, I mean, just I come from an overweight family, so I've always been kind of chubby. But I've been in sports since I was tiny and all that. Well, kind of stuff. So I've always all you got to do is read. Why don't you just read one of those books? Those retarded. See, and Tyler Watch Banks will just come out with a book. You just read it and you learn how to be beautiful. I should just read about how guys aren't good at, uh, into me and the, uh, how anybody can be a supermodel as long as they just really want <laughs> to enough. See? Well, uh, Cindy Crawford or Tyra Banks will come out with a book on beauty, and then you read it, and then you become. And then that. I'll so you really feel beautiful yeah. and just become. No, 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 no. That's You'll, no, you'll, no, you'll transform. If you ever ask any of those lame brains uh, what's the most important uh, beauty tip, it's it's the inside out. It's uh, as long as I feel beautiful, then oh everyone. Oh, my God. I know. It's like. We forgot about that I one. I forgot. <laughs> oh. The, 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 like there's, We've left that one. We've been let that there's, one go There's a, a million while. reasons why yeah. I hate supermodels. The number one reason is. Oh, no, actually. Number one is none of them got into modeling. Yeah, they just, their friends set them up for a contest. That's right. Every one of them. There's no supermodel in the world, evidently, that knows they're attractive. Right. Okay. For the, hey, the, hey, they tomboy, 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 B, tomboy. No date to the prom. No date to the prom. C got in was was pre med, and when I say pre med, I mean the ninth grade. Yeah, no, they're usually medical school ninth grade. No, no, speaks three languages. No, no, no. When you start when you start scratching the surface, you That's realize what I'm saying. But they usually say medical school, and then uh, you realize it was ninth grade mad. Say, well, it wanted, wanted Remember we, we had that? All remember right, that? All right. Yeah, they're in the ninth grade. Yeah, right. That's that's. We found a couple of them that, that everyone were, who's remember tech- the ones speaking French fluently, <laughs> and I spoke to her. I was like, uh, oh. yeah, we <laughs> yeah we had a public. Oh, okay, listen. All right. Anyway, point is is uh, models. They uh, the number one beauty tip. It's it's uh, it's about how a woman feels. Yeah. If, she, if she feels sexy, she is sexy. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> what about guys? If we feel sexy, are we sexy? Oh yeah, of course. You know what I mean? I guess we always feel that way. If if, if Larry Flint feels sexy, <laughs> is he sexy to the ladies? Because he's feeling it. Do you know what I mean? He feels sexy. <sighs> As I heard a woman Ed say Astor. once in New York City, she goes, "It depends right. if he stands on his wallet or not." Right. Rob Reiner, when he feels sexy, he's a sexy man, fat, bloated lard, lardo. Come on. Oh, screw Come him. Come now. Screw him. What did he say? Did he do oh, he's a, uh, no, he just always wants money for everybody. Oh, 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 that's right. He's always right. bugging that's everybody. Right. He always right. sucks. Right. South Park did a great episode about that. All right. Just look, give, him, give him your own crappy money. That's yeah. all. He, he, all he wants is everyone to quit smoking and everyone to start giving money to everyone. He's the one who sucks. All right. So no, Katie, I don't, I don't Katie's good. Katie's doing. Katie wants to know about oral sex. Uh, how soon do STDs show up? Um, you know, you giving oral sex, uh, if you were going to get herpes, you would have sores potentially within a day or so, but up to two weeks after. You'd have a sore throat very quickly within a day or two if you had chlamydia. You'd mm-hmm. have a shanker within a few days if you had, within a week, if you had syphilis. Ah, and fine. if you didn't swallow semen, HIV is really not that big an issue. If you did, obviously a, a check and then six months recheck. Mm-hmm. Tony, yeah. But again, it doesn't matter how big your ass is. You feel beautiful, you are beautiful. Let's take just, a break. Just ask Tyra Banks, she'll tell you. I know. You feel beautiful. Yeah. Ask Cindy Crawford. Ask Elle McPherson. When you feel beautiful, you're sexy. And, and yet, and yet, in her uh, supermodel, who's, who's going to be the next supermodel series? Nobody's I, feeling I didn't hear beautiful. Any of that. Didn't no hear part any of about that. feeling beautiful. In fact, quite the contrary, they're kicking each other's rear. Well, look, just admit you're there because you're hot, and just admit you're hot because you have a genetic hand dealt to you. Just like you're short. I don't like, okay, all right, I'm gonna, uh, here's all I'm saying. To, to say you did something to, to make yourself hot somehow, because when you say you're going to write a book about how to be hot, it suggests that you did something. And they always tell us, oh, I was into ballet when I was younger. That's how I got these toned legs and stuff like that. I just don't like what it implies because it implies the people that aren't hot are doing something wrong or lazy. Agreed. Right. Yes. These chicks are hot because they're hot. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Can't argue with it. It's going to take them 30 years of doing heroin and eating White Castle to F with it. That's it. It's all genetics, everybody. Love of Christ. It's all genetics. It's all it is. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. We will uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back after this. Hello. This is your radio. radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Yeah, everybody. 
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. True. Phone number 1-800-LFEE-191. Those are the gorillas, our favorite band. Eddie Griffin is uh, coming in here later uh, on this week. And then Pennywise. All right. Uh, fiance uh, prefers to masturbate over having sex with him. That sounds good. <laughs> Bill? Yes. 23? Yes. Your uh, fiance prefers to masturbate over having sex with you? Yeah, please help me. <laughs> prefers or because she's a virgin and is trying to hold off or what? what's going on? No, we've had sex before. and uh, But sometimes we... Actually, Go ahead. It, it was every day for, you know, about nine, maybe ten months. Sometimes two times a day. And when did it stop? Uh, about two months ago. And what did she say the reason was? She hasn't told me. She'll literally rub it in my face. Mm. I mean, it, I got it's, bogus. Like, Hold on a second. Uh, I got bogus from Bill. I, I get, I got, I, I, I get intermit, a, intermittent bog, bogosity. Maybe, maybe sort of blowhard a hole. I got, I got early bogus from Bill, yeah, and then too. it smoothed out a little, and then it went bogus again. Sorry, Bill. Hello? Bill, yeah. yeah, making the bogus call. I, I'm sorry, guys. I swear to God, everything that's holy, this is true. Okay. He's and the well, only reason I can think is there's been maybe three or four times that I have not been able to get her off. And I've never seen a woman get so mad about it, literally. I, I have no reason to make it up. All right. Well, here's the thing. According to the laws of the Geneva Bogosity Convention, we must participate in this right, phone call because he to was the best supposed, of our ability. Right. Now, uh, if she got angry, violently angry, because you were unable to give her an orgasm a couple of times, she has serious issues. And uh, those issues need to be looked into before this relationship progresses. Do you understand? Yeah, we're supposed to be getting married within the next year. Yeah, that is something that I would put on ice like a lobster for me. How old is she? She's 25. And you, Bill, sound like you've not been around the block too many times with too many ladies. Is that correct? No, no not at all. That's true or not true? It's true. I haven't. Okay. Yeah. And you uh, are, here's the thing, you're a good guy, you're a nice guy. Um, she's a little bit older. She has a little more experience than you do, correct? She has two kids. And oh. I was about to say some baggage. And the angry, the angry thing yeah. is a really not a good sign. Well, here's what's going on with Bill. Bill has been adrift in a uh, vaginalist sea and for he, many, many years. And he got a number above his. And he just had something come floating along and he grabbed onto it. And he ain't letting go. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is what came floating along, while while you thought was good, seemed like a, seemed seemed like just a wooden crate that you could grab onto and get some relief from the ocean. Turns out it's uh, filled with uh, uh, rabies infested rats. <laughs> and you're actually better off floating on the open ocean than you are hanging on to these rats that are attracting sharks and nipping at your fingers as you cling to life. Yes. Oh my. Vivid, yes, true. Yeah, vivid, beautiful, lovely, poetic. But Bill, I'm sorry, you, I'm, you I don't do want to give. I don't know the situation. Bill, do you do really. you do something with computer t technology or you, you know, something like that? No, no, not at all. A farmer. What do you do? I am actually. You'll get a kick out of this. A professional stripper, floor stripper. Oh, floor stripper. Oh, yeah, oh, you, yeah. You run a drum sander. Uh, well, it's a commercial floor care. Do you, uh, you, like, you do? Is it a, is it a circular one or a drum one? Circular. All right. Oh, you're you're not stripping hardwood floors. You're stripping no. wax floors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. You, you're running a buffer. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you that's uh that's a that's a pussy gig right there. <laughs> I, just, I just heard C. They, I out at C. They see you. <laughs> they see you standing in the lobby of the convention center with <laughs> your ass moving in time. <laughs> <laughs> They're running for him, oh, jumping, heaving oh, himself. Oh my God. Oh, it would be Bill. a crime to get married. Bill. Yes. Baby Bill, here's the thing, sweetie. This guy, this chick, I should say, has some issues <sighs> and some baggage. And you, Bill, mm -hmm. take it from a guy who used to clean carpets. I'm you know, I'm in I'm in your fraternity, your floor your commercial floor care fraternity. Yeah. Do not listen to me, Bill. 
do not get married to this girl this soon. She just got over a divorce. Give it some time. Please give it some time. Tell her we, you want to address these issues. And here's the thing, everybody. If you say to your person, look, I'm not saying we're not getting married. I'm saying I want this marriage to last. I, I want, want to understand don't, why you're doing something strange like masturbating. I don't want it to like, last for 18 yeah. months. I want, I want it to last for 200 years. You're doing something strange. We got to look into this. Right. And it, you know what it's like? It's like if you're at the bank and they say, you know what, uh, Dr. Uh, Pinsky, we just want to check, double check your signature card and your right. ID. If if it is, if your signature's yeah, on that good. card, by all means, yeah, do your job. Right. Do your job. Uh, you freaking out when the person says it's going to take five minutes? That means... Uh, you got a criminal. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. If she says, by all means, let's get this stuff straightened out before we tie the knot, I don't want to make the same mistake twice, fine. If she starts freaking, you don't want her. Please listen, Bill. Here we go. Quick break. Be right back after this. If you need help... Call Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. <laughs> Yeah, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let me give you uh, another phone number if you want to come see my new uh, Comedy Central show. 866-546-6984. 866-546-6984. Let me say this, Drew. Yeah. Now get ready for hot horny studs. Yeah, that's oh my God. That's the machine you'll reach. Oh. 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 I have a gay assistant. Yes, you do. <laughs> and you got a fight with him last week. I got in a fight with him like a month ago. Oh, he hates Anderson, but well, now he hates you too. Well, that's fine. Uh, I don't. You know, Anderson doesn't pay him. He was like, I can't stand that Anderson. I was like, join a join the queue, buddy. Get in line. So uh, he um, he's gay, super gay. Novelty gay. Novelty gay. I saw him, I, I was at your party, and he came in in, like, uh, chaps and uh, zebra boots and uh, makeup, yeah. I think. Yeah. Super novelty gay. Yeah. And I realized, nice yeah, yeah, good guy. I had him doing, trying to do a couple things. Once in a while, I try to send him to the hardware store to go pick up something. And then he comes back with the wrong thing, and then I send him back, and he brings the wrong thing again. And then I tell him to go rent the carpet cleaner or something like that, and he comes back with the thing. And then I realize, and I always, then I say to my wife, I send him, send Matt down or whatever. And she always goes, hey, he's gay. Leave him alone. And, that, and that's what everyone says. Now they mean, here's what they mean. They don't mean he's handicapped or he's crippled, but you sent him to go do a straight thing. Oh. You see what I'm saying? I don't think that's true. Yeah, you don't because you're on the radio and people are listening to you. But I'm no, telling I really you, don't think that's true. let me tell you how society works. You send a gay guy to the hardware store and say, I told the guy to get X, Y, and Z, and he came back with P, D, and Q, and people go, oh, what do you expect? He's gay. He doesn't know the hardware store. Look for uh, the areas. Fill that space. See, that right? guy would know. He would the whole know. idea about uh, creating focal points in your room is, is still the keeping your eye trained to, for those little details. It's those little details <laughs> that make <laughs> the home yours. Yeah. Little details, <sighs> like, like getting the uh, ribbed butt plug as opposed to <laughs> just a smooth one. I got the uh, message that Matt left me. You want to hear it? Yeah, I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear that for a second. Oh, hey guys. Anderson, this is Matt, Adam Corolla's assistant. I got your message. I didn't appreciate it. Um, <laughs> clearly, if I failed to understand your name twice, but I can understand everyone else's name when they call, yeah. it doesn't seem like it's my it's problem. It seems like you need to enunciate a, a little bit better. Or not be loaded or when you call. Or when you leave a message. Um, I'll pass on that you called to Adam, but I really don't like degrading messages on the voicemail. Yeah. Well, that's that's one that's one thing I like about Matt. He Scott. stands up for himself. He stands up for himself and myself too, except uh, for he tells me to f off every other day. Well, that's too. good. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I hope I hope he's effective because otherwise he'd just be just sitting there taking abuse. And uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. And we get then he'd have a huge eruption every day. Oh yeah, no, he has one twice a week. So here's the thing. Uh, no, I like, he's got chutzpah because he yells at people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I realize if you just announce to the world you're gay, you never get that, uh, Saturday morning phone call where, uh, you got to help your buddy move. Yeah. And I know you don't, 
I know you don't want to participate or go along with me in this one. I just don't. You don't get that, let's move. You don't get that, we got to go down to the hardware store. You don't get the barn raising phone call. You get left alone. You get cut slack. Oh, yes. What's the reasoning? That you're not capable of that or something? Uh, or? Look, all I know is you tell you start complaining about, uh, go find a gay buddy and tell him, I, I sent him over to go do this or I told him to go do that. Now, I'm not talking about clerical work. I'm talking about something physical or something that a guy traditionally, not a guy like you, Drew, who calls I was going to say, you're, 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 I, I must, I must I know, be gay. But here's my point. If I said... I sent Drew to the hardware store to get double-A uh, batteries, and he came back with triple-A batteries. Be angry. People would say, what's wrong with Drew? Okay. If Drew was gay, they'd go, ah, he's gay, leave him alone. That's not his place. Mm. I'm just saying, okay. you get, you go gay, you get a gay assistant, you start sending him out to do a bunch of little stuff, and they come back uh, with snake eyes, and people say a lot of the time, hey, he's, he's gay, that's not his thing. That's not his place. You know, what do you expect? He's not going to go to clean your carpets. He's gay. Do you know what? You, you're making a face, but I'm telling you. All right. I, I, you're usually right about things. So well, I'm just, just telling you. It's not, it's not true. Look, if you say go to Kinko's and make some copies, no one's right. going to say he's gay. If you say go down to Starbucks and get a pound of uh, French roast, no one's going to go, oh, well, he didn't do it right because he's gay. No, it's none of that stuff. But if you say go rent a van or something, anything that's sort of stereotypical, heterosexual. Because, because they have no experience doing that? Don't know. Because society, you know why? I'll huh. tell you why. Because society and and they have lumped themselves in with females. Mm. And by the same reason, if if I said to somebody, oh, man, we were moving into the new house, and my wife, man, I tell you, she must have brought a shoebox worth of stuff in over the house. Ah, come on, give her a break. She's a chick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now, my buddy Ray, my buddy Chris could never get away with that. Right, right, right. You see? Yes. We have relegated the gays into chick territory when it comes to the things like So you're the saying we're, be, we're being uh, chauvinistic or we're, we're, we're discriminatory for no good reason. We should be, we should be holding them accountable like anybody else. We, yes. They have testicles. All right. <laughs> they have backs. No, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, if if I was like I was walking along the street and uh, some guy came up and started with me and uh, next thing you know fists were flying, and I said I was with Ray or Chris, they'd be like, why didn't they jump in? Mm. I, I have your back. But if you say you're with my gay buddy, they're like, ah oh, yeah. Now yeah. listen, I, think about you're it. You're not Drew. saying that's right. You're saying just that's how people. I are. know you don't want to get involved with this I because just don't you know. don't think it's right. But yes. Yes, if I was walking down the street right. with my assistant Matt and some guy started stuff and the fists started flying. Okay. You treat Matt like he was a woman, mm -hmm. whereas Ray or Chris or any of my other buddies would not get that same okay. courtesy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you're, you're talking about people on two ends of a spectrum, too. Well, that's true. But yeah. here's the thing. I realize that gay men, while sort of taking on the ways of a woman, uh, society has now basically... Uh, identified them as females when it comes to the heavy lifting. Right. Think about it, Drew. Yeah, you know I, any gay movers? Mm. Gay bouncers? But you're, but you're going for this gay I guess, gay. gay. I guess at a gay nightclub. You're, you're, you're going gay. for... I don't know who's gay and who's right, not gay. Right. All I'm saying... Here's what I'm saying, Drew. But you're saying that people... Just listen. Stereotypically, people would do that. Here's what I think. Uh. What do you think of this? Uh. I think a lot of women, able-bodied young women, get away... With a lot of playing that, I couldn't lift it card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't want, it's more they didn't want to do it. Right. They right. just, but they're playing that card, the same card I would play. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't want to get up on the ladder. I didn't want to cut the ivy. I didn't want to drag the stuff out to the street or I didn't want to move the boxes. I don't know how to work the carpet cleaner. I, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's convenient. It's great. They don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Fine. I think a lot of gay guys play that card too. Could be. And I think we force that hand on them. All right. Well, they're chicks. So they're, we're discriminating. Yeah. They're acting like women. It's sort of reverse discrimination of sorts. W no, it's not. We're getting screwed. <laughs> now we got chicks and gays who can't do anything. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? All right. All right. Let's see, Drew. It's a guy who does nothing. See, I, that's right. A guy I, who's that's right. For all intent and purposes, I must be gay. gay. I must be gay. You are you are practically gay, and I don't mean almost gay. I just mean for for all for all practical purposes, gay. Effectively gay. Effectively gay. Fantastic. Fantastically gay. <laughs>
Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Uh, yes. Yes, you are no use to anyone, including yourself. Right. All you're good for is kicking rocks at the beach. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But <laughs> Drew's <laughs> nail is a mess, by the way, his toenail. Yeah. All right, so it's easy for you to see their side. I'm just saying close your eyes and just yeah, think yeah, yeah. from a societal standpoint, you just, guys, and yes, if you're flamboyant, yes, if you're Liberace, right. nobody blames him for not watching his buddy's back in an alley fight right. or going and moving these boxes or chopping down a tree or something like right. that. That's a particular guy. I'm just saying when you close your eyes and you think about that guy, yep. you don't think of him any differently than you think if you asked your that mom guy. to go chop a tree down yes, and then stack guy. the cords of logs in the back of the house. Right, that guy, yes. And, and shades of gray in between. Yes. So if you're gay, you get out of a lot of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's one more reason for me to go gay. I was just thinking that. Yes. I mean, there you go. You're in. Be awesome, right? Right. Gay, left alone. Oh, and you. Oh no more God. weekend moves. No more. I, you know how many phone calls I get just on home improvement stuff? I All bet. day. Everyone, hey, I'm, you got a good, could you come over? Look, I got a good, do you got, can I borrow a, do you got to have a three-eighths or half-inch That's chuck? just your family. Oh, that's just the family. Yeah. This is gay. The phone would never, never ring anymore. I'd just say, you want to come over and have a smart cocktail? We're lounging by the pool. It'd be awesome. Drew. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I got to go gay. Well, you've always said that. Tony. Yeah, I, I know I've said it in the past. I've threatened in the past. You're in now. Now I mean it. You're gone. Tony? Hey, what's up? 18? Uh, yeah, my uh, question's for Drew. Uh, yeah, uh, I went to the doctor, and they say that I have an early beginning stage part of uh, uh, bacterial meningitis. Uh-huh. And they are, I'm supposed to go in this up and coming Wednesday to have a spinal tap and was wondering... What kind of, um, I've heard that there can be a lot of things either go wrong or there could be some trouble with it. I was wondering what kind of things could happen. No, spinal taps are like having your blood drawn. It's very, very simple. That, you get a headache afterwards. But that's you, you basically curl up in a fetal position and they just drop a needle right into just about They L4. get fluid from your spine? And they draw fluid from the spine. It's a very simple procedure. And you Why do they need the fluid easy. from your spine? You, you, he, they think he has an infection there. So they take it out and, and look at it under a microscope and uh -huh. culture it and mm -hmm. look at the protein and sugar content in the, in the spinal uh -huh. fluid and tell is, them is, uh, I, I think the spinal tamp thing freaks people out. Yeah. It needs a new name. Uh, lumbar puncture. Mm -hmm. Lumbar is good. Lumbar puncture. And uh, you, usually they give you a CAT scan beforehand just because just to double check things because Ugh. it can be a serious thing. If there's a tumor up there and they do a spinal tap. But be that as it may, uh, it's weird, though, that if they believe you have bacterial meningitis, that they wouldn't have done the spinal tap on the spot. That's bizarre. So that's the only thing that's wild about this is that they're waiting. Uh, another question. Um, Unless they, they think you have TB or something. Hold on. Could. It's got another question. All right, correct. Uh, <laughs> He's not did they find anymore. anything else like drugs in the No. Tab? No. But if you're, if you're having weird neurological problems and you're doing drugs and you don't tell the doctor, you're going to have lots of expensive and painful procedures while they try to figure out what's going on with you, and it all turns out to be drugs anyway. So you better tell your doctor what's going on. Like that is a foolish, foolish let mistake. Do, let me do a little reenactment foolish there. Mistake. You give me the same speech you just gave Tony. All right. You're going to have lots of painful and expensive procedures if you don't tell your doctor. If they think there's something neurological going on with you and you're doing drugs, you don't tell them, that's foolish. Okay. Like, <laughs> clearly beaten man at that point. Like, uh, he's obviously done copious amounts of drugs yeah. and uh, had no intention of telling anybody about his yeah. drug use. Tony, I could tell you'd done a lot of drugs when you said hi. Actually, you didn't say hi, but when you just were like, uh, okay, yeah. I got uh, okay, a good question. Yeah. What's up, buddy? You're 18. Uh-huh. You're, you're too young for Here's the deal. Drugs. These, the drug, illicit drugs damage people's brain, cause all kinds of uh, neurological problems. If you're, seeing, if you're having an evaluation for neurological problems and you don't tell them about that. What drugs are you doing? Uh, Coke. Cocaine? Yeah. Well, you can even have strokes with that. How so much that, of that are you doing? Uh, not too much. Just, you know, hmm. a couple lines here, a couple lines there. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. I, it's, it's pretty far off addiction, you know. It's You're not smoking pot every day? Uh, I smoke pot every once in a while. How often? Uh, I'd say ten times a week. Ten times a week? Yeah. That's every day. That's more than every day, right? Mm -hmm. So there you go. You're smoking pot. What's that? A couple times a day. Yeah, you're smoking pot every day, and now you're getting. What do you start with? Occasionally, yeah, or? Okay, here and there, here and there. 
Yeah. No, so that's, that's here and here. And that causes a lot of neurological symptoms as well. So you need to talk to the doctor about these things. And it's not like they're going to turn you, take you over to the police or that they can even tell your parents. You're 18. It's, it's illegal for them to share that information with anybody. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tony, you, you, uh, you do sound affected. Yeah. You really do. We, we hear the pot mostly. Yes. So what's the plan? I mean, you're 18. You're going to get a job. You're going to go to school. Well, I'm, working to, I'm working to be an uh, auto mechanic. All right. Well, as long as you're working to be something. Here's the thing uh, with weed. Uh, they got to reel it in a little bit. It's too good. <laughs> yeah, it's screwing people up. Now, here's what I realized, Drew. Yeah. Uh, back, way back in the day. Like, no, you had to smoke a lid to get what you get from my, like, my mom would have to days. smoke a shoebox full of pot to get, a, just to get half high. Here, when my mom was smoking weed, like in the 70s, 60s, 70s, weed was, first off, it was the pot leaf. Remember that, everyone? It was not the bud. Mm. It was the leaf. People smoke pot leaves. But they don't do that anymore? I, I didn't realize they that. They smoke bud. Interesting. They really mean bud when they say bud now. Oh, true. You yeah, are, I'm, I'm you Squaresville. Are you Squaresville? Squaresville. Oh, what do you do, run a small upholstering shop in uh, upstate New York, or do you do an addiction like, drug? Guys, yeah. No, it's just like you guys seem like teenagers. Oh. Yeah. Your voices are like old. <laughs> Here's the comment. six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, hello. People hey. smoke bud. No, I've heard it called bud, and well, I assumed bud there was bud in is... there, but I didn't realize there was no leaf anymore. I that's interesting. I know I, I know how powerful it is. I know the anymore. effects, but it's interesting. That's interesting to me. It's all bud. Interesting. You'd be well. I mean, the the leaf is sort of in the bud. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. But here's the thing: the pot leaf. It used to be you would take a pot leaf, yeah. you would drive the pot leaf, yep. and you would smoke it like you smoke tobacco leaf. Absolutely. And uh, there'd be some stem and some seeds and some, uh, you know, some twigs and crap in People there. People would like, ceremonial clean the pot, remember that? Yeah, would just, you just take, that's what the lid of the shoebox is for, is pick all the seeds and stems and all that. But the point is, is that stuff was nothing compared to what's out there now. It's all purple and sticky and hairy. It's a disaster. Yeah. Huh? Now, here's what I'm saying. Science has gotten way too far ahead well, it's of a, us. Listen, it's the same thing as any other form of addiction. The addictions get more serious the more we altered chemicals. So when we came up with heroin, we came up with cocaine, when we came up with uh, Valium and Xanax, mm. people get more addicted. It's yeah. more and more. And now they're changing the pot and making it more powerful, more I addiction. Want, here's all I, all I want. I don't want to be Squaresville. I want to, you know, I want to toke out when I'm uh, hanging with the cool people. <laughs> But it's so potent now that I can barely handle it. Yeah. So I'm saying what I need is the version of a, uh, whatever the equivalent to the wine cooler would be. Because this is just straight whiskey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. This is grain alcohol. And it, I don't want to get that effed up. But I wouldn't mind carrying around a Zima Bart equivalent to the pot. Bartles and James. Yeah. I just, I want to get a nice buzz going, but I don't want to, I don't want to spin out of control. See what, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if somebody could go ahead and create a weed that was, you know, they're working on the most potent stuff. I'd like them to work on some intermediate stuff Why don't so you go I can easy blow on the, some spleef. The dose, I mean, take a half of a hit or something. You know what? It's tough, especially when it's administered through the bong. Yeah. Because then it's like you, you, the next thing you know, it's like oh, pop the car. <laughs> What's your cough? And now, now you're so dead. One hit and you're, you're oh screwed. Oh my god! Really? Pot is potent now, Drew. Mm. Pot will jack your ass up. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm just telling oh, you. Oh, man. I'm worried about you. That's yeah. what I'm telling you. Thank you. Now, all I'm saying is if they could cut it with a little flower or something, literally flowers, if they could just put some potpourri or something, some oregano. I mean, I know it's, it's like it used to be the stuff you try to sell a, as pot. I need some of that stuff back in there, some parsley or something. Thin it out just a little bit and give me a shot. <laughs> it's too good. It's scary. I'm just confused why you can't take like a little bit. <laughs> well, first off, do you know what you look like when someone gives you a bong and you're like, <laughs> 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 and they're still big. First off, you don't pop the bowl and the, the, the chamber's all filled with stuff. All right, and you're your just, highness. You just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you just seem gay. Yeah. Come on. You are gay. Well, or you want to be. trying to be Well, gay. that's the other way you can. Yeah. All right. Okay. Melanie? Nah. Yeah. The gays can't smoke weed. Can't? Can. 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 They're cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello? Melanie. Yeah, go ahead. What's up, baby doll? Here you go. 
We're here. Oh, hi. Hey. Am I online? Are yes, you are. The... Yes, go. Oh. Okay, so I have a question about phone sex etiquette. Mm-hmm. I want to know if there if there's sort of a expected turnaround phone call time limit, sort of an Emily Post of phone sex. Usually, I understand. It's usually well, it's with mean? somebody you know very well. You're trying to maintain no, no, a long no, distance. Somebody that, somebody that I don't know at all. Had, there's no what, etiquette. What happened? All right, so I got a, I got a phone call, like a, a, a wrong phone number. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I called it back, and it was somebody who I thought sounded attractive, and we just started talking. And then after a few days, we ended oh up having phone sex. Oh, oh boy. She's <laughs> hey. She just packed on fifty pounds too. How what? much you weigh, Melanie? Huh? Melanie, how much? What's your What's your weight? What's my weight? Oh, oh, just I just put another fifteen on. That's so cool. Go ahead, baby. Seriously. One forty. One forty plus fifty. Turn your weight. Turn your radio off. I'll Please. Radio. Is that a CB? Turn yeah. your radio off. Okay, here's what people do. People come home, check their phone number, see a number that they don't recognize and call it back. Or get hung up on or something. You know, you pick up the phone and it's just it hangs up. Yeah. Which means somebody called you and recognized they didn't call you. Right. They try to call somebody else. Right. Now, I don't know who those people are who want to confront those people or get to the bottom of it. Yeah, that's a bad impulse. It, it means you're super lonely or super angry or possibly both. Yeah. Like... Like if if I pick up the phone and someone hung up, I just assume no, they just called mistake. Yeah, they're expecting a chick's voice and yeah. they got me. Yeah, I I really don't want to talk to those people. I want to talk to them less. Right. Then uh, the next guy is going to call. I'm not really going to want to talk to you, but has to talk to me. That is a weird impulse when you call those people back. Why did you call that person back? Because I was bored on the beach and we were drunk and we thought it was funny. Oh. Just put another twenty pounds on, and uh, and and you got a guy. Yeah. And well, you have a crush on this guy, right? No. <laughs> Why? What's funny about that? Why would I have a crush on him? I don't know him. No, that's a healthy impulse not to have a crush. No, it is. But I mean, you called him. You had an intimate. Why? Why would you have an intimate no, no, conversation? No, but, but she, with she's him? able to compartmentalize this a little bit. No, she, but she's now wanting to call back. Yeah, that's a bad impulse. No, no, I don't want him to call back. It's not a matter of wanting him to call back. It's a matter of just sort of now rehashing it and wondering. Are what do you? What? Do you, why would you owe this guy something? Do you owe him something? You have no, no I'm relationship. Not. You're not. You're not attracted to him. You don't want to know him. You had this I'm thing saying, as a. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I owe him or he owes me or anything. Right. There's but yeah, no you, owing at all. You you don't have a boyfriend, right? No. All so right. why would you care about having etiquette in relation to someone who doesn't exist to you? about caring it's more about a funny question just, just a question curious. all right all it's right a, it's a it's a just putting it Ab- out there abstract question. question yeah all, all all bets are off yeah with that you don't anybody anything are you gonna call him back no huh no i mean why would i why would no, you? No, it's good. It's good. No, I understand, but I can tell when someone's intrigued. Yeah. And when women are intrigued, they ask questions and they make statements, and oftentimes they say, oh, I don't care. I'm not interested. I'm not into him, but yet they're bringing it up. I think she's a little compulsed is what it is. No, no, it's no. Sort of well, rousing experience no, no. Intrigued is just a euphemism for compulsed. It's, it's summer vacation with minimal things to do in a new city. It's just kind of fun. See? There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You Look, go. if you want to call the guy, call him. No, no, no. That's not. Don't about meet him, though. Him. No, no, oh, no, no, that's no, 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 no. Yes, no, thank no. you. But it's Never. just you know, you understand. Summer, not much going on. <laughs> well, all right, no, baby. A lot going on. All right, what are you doing in in this new city? Uh, working. All right. Uh, good. <laughs> Could you go back to whatever city you came from, please? What kind of working does one do? Uh, I'm a therapist. All right. Not even wait, a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not true. <laughs> that's that's not right. No, I you, swear to God I am. Are you are you doing your clinical hours now or No, I'm 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 licensed. And what's L C S W or what do you have? Psy D? L M H C. M F T? No, L M H C. It's like an L M F T but it's different in Massachusetts. No. Yeah, but well, you 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 don't have a license here in California. No, I don't yet. I'm still in the process of Right. Don't you have to do some clinical hours here? 
No, I've done my clinical hours. I just they, they'll, to... they'll transfer? Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Yep. And, and uh, <laughs> there's going to be someone's therapist? Hmm? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. No boundaries. All right, Melanie. No, she does. She does have boundaries. I know. She's a little nutty, too, though. Like all shrinks. All right. <laughs> Look, here's all I'm saying. There are no, edi- no, no rules. Just right, as they say, the uh, Outback Steakhouse. But here's the thing. If you want to call this guy back and uh, diddle yourself, I will not judge. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I had a weird thing like this happen to me when I was like 21. What? I had some chick call. And uh, I don't, I don't, I, 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 to this day, I have no idea. You know, if you go back and uh, take a look at your life, there's probably, eh, if you'd led a fairly interesting life, moved around a little, seen a few people, done a few things, there's probably 20 things where you just couldn't explain them. Some, some from childhood, some from adult. Like you think, as you go back and go over it in your mind's eye, you think, yeah, I have no idea why that person did that, or I, or I, I, I who called who, or if that was a coincidence, right, or were right. they screwing with me, or were they stalking well, me, happened? or did I know them? Uh, chick called in my apartment. I must have just talked to her, and I think she just wanted to have phone sex, huh. and uh, I wasn't about phone sex. <laughs> I was like, uh, bring it, bring it on over. Yeah, you know, let me have a look at you. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, she just wanted the phone. I promise you, I'm hot, but let's have phone sex kind of thing. And I was like, well, if you're hot. You got nothing to hide. Now come you're, on, now you're really sound. Come over. And I was uh, rock bottom in my life because, oh. uh, well, because it was uh, age, well, zero to 30. <laughs> so, you know, you know, oh, I was at rock yeah, bottom. For those years. Yeah, for those 30 years. So, uh, you know, I'd, and she'd call. Right? I never called her. She would just ran. She was, said she was a nursing student, said she, like, lived in Bel Air, described herself like 30,000 times. And I just kept saying, look, I'm just coming over there. Like, let's go. And uh, she she never went to, and she did, and eventually I went to go find her. Like she told me to go meet her somewhere, and I went, and uh, she was never there. Wow! I don't think I ever heard from her again, and I have no idea and she what was it just was. The wrong number. I I don't know if it started as a wrong number. I don't know if she somehow knew me. I don't know if <laughs> someone put her up to it. I it went on for months. Weird. I didn't never well, want to do. Well, the she's phone. listening. She should call in now. We'll see yeah. if I identify her. Never want to do the phone sex thing though. Yeah, yeah. Drew is a man of passion. Mm. As a man of passion, I could make arguments for you doing the phone sex thing. Oh, I suppose. But, Mm. nah. Now, you know what? You and I are very much uh, akin in many uh, sexual... Sexual sides of the bed. No, yes. we're oh, not yeah. into the cornhole, and we're no. not. In, we don't want to talk about it. No. To me, you know what? You know what phone sex is like to me. It's like if I was in prison and I said, uh, "Where are you, Drew?" and you said, <clears throat> "Oh, I'm at uh, I'm at a Ruth Chris Steakhouse," and I said, "Read me the menu." Oh yeah, right. It's, br- it's brutal, painful. It's, it's painful. Yeah, right. Yeah, forget it. Read me the menu. No, look, either bring over steak or, or hang up the phone. Now, I might want to hear, here's, here's the part that the... If you ate a really good steak, uh, you could belch on me. I, I might want to hear about how you appreciated it. Yeah. Your experience. And so that, the phone sex thing is sort of, uh, you get yeah. a sense what the person's experiencing. I'm just saying, if I, can't, about if I can't pull up a plate... Right. So basically, when I call you later tonight, you can't. You're saying we can't. <laughs> no phone no, sex tonight. Oh, I, I'm glad you got that subtle yeah, message. Okay. We'll take a quick break. Be right, be back with some uh, Germany or Florida after this. Love line. We'll be right back. Huh. Yeah, everybody. Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Let me tell you something, everybody. I use a condom. That's my thing. I put it over my head and I blow it up like Howie Mandel nice. used to That's do good. his head. And one lucky person tonight is going to win a Durex party pack. That's uh, party pack includes uh, CDs, poker set, and money. Cash, money, and condoms. Of course, those Durex condoms are going to come in the party pack. Each night this week, Dr. Drew is going to decide on the best call of the night, and that person's going to win himself a party ta- pack. The winner must be 18 years or older to win. Brought to you by Durex. There's sex, and then there's Durex. And now it is time to play a little something we call Germany or Florida. Ricky? Hey, Adam. Corolla. Corolla. Thank Adam, you. I do. I'm a huge fan. Can't wait for your show on Comedy Central. Thank you. And uh, Drew, I read your book, Crack, loved it, and did a book report on it, got an A. 
Wow, Ricky, I'm impressed. Thank you. Uh, I mean, my grades from high school. <laughs> Sob. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Ooh, you should, Ricky, you should have seen that transcript. Yeah, I brought my Lordy. Tra- I brought my transcripts in on Thursday. I got from high school and junior high, and uh, it was a disaster. Yeah, lots of DUUs, DUSs, oh, zeros, just zeros. A couple of zeros, a couple of fails in there. An a in football and basketball, <laughs> football and baseball. <laughs> anyway, what's up, Ricky? All right, here we go. Um, Jeremy in Florida. A man earned the title of the vampire rapist after he picked up a young female uh, hitchhiker. And while holding her a prisoner over a 22-hour period, raped her and then used a needle and tubing to drain a considerable portion of her blood into a jar, which she then consumed. Mm. By some miracle, the woman, even though weakened by the loss of blood, escaped, and and the man was subsequently arrested and sentenced to 25 years in prison. Germany or Florida? I was just feeling Germany. Felt felt German. Yeah. Felt German from the word go to me. All the tubing and everything. A little technical. Training, the tubing. Mm. A little... little, uh, Abduction and raping. High tech. And the, uh, yeah, the part where you imprison. Also Germany? Well, here's the thing. Floridians get right to it. Floridians just rape by the side of the road and keep moving because, yeah. you know, there's there's more more to rape. There's rape and kill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, rape and dump. R&D, they call it. <laughs> oh, God. I, know, I know a lot of people, you know, big businesses have an R&D department. <laughs> it's different. In, well, in some, in, in Florida, some, but in yes, if in they're Florida, in Florida, oh, if you're talking to a big company, even Disney, and they talk about R and D, they're talking about rape and dump. <laughs> uh, All right, Ricky. Yeah, we're going Germany. Germany. Yeah, both All right. going happened, Germany. Happened near Melbourne, Florida. Oh <gasps> wow, good one, brutal, Excellent. nice job, well Ricky. done. Depressing, but nice. No, work, no, buddy. that's good. Well, no I way mean, we. The, I mean, for the person. That's that how the ripped. game was played. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's how the game's... And I was talking about the woman who was oh, uh, I see. drained of blood and oh, raped for pain. Depressing for her, I see. Sad. Yeah. Not think, for us. Well, I'd been say, tricked I'd say by Ricky. in a way, a greater tragedy for us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We have to brutal. live with this stigma. Brutal. She'll be over in a few years of therapy. Huh. All right, Ricky, thank you. That's uh, why they call it Germany or Florida. That's right. I think that's right. great. Thanks, buddy. We haven't been stumped in a while, so, uh, again, mazel tov. Shirley. Hey. 18. Mm-hmm. What's up, baby? Hey, dog? listen, just with that attitude. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got it. Yeah. Are you uh, multi orgasmic? No, 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 no. No. Oh, you're getting the Durex. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thought that was something else. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> hey, we're going to give you the Durex party pack because uh, you are spunky, baby. You want to give me the Durex party pack because I'm spunky. Yeah. And it also also means someone is sitting next to you. So you could repeat it so they can hear it. <laughs> That's the only time. It's the only yeah. time uh, people talk like they're in movies. Meet you at the old Chelsea, Chelsea Pier at midnight. <laughs> Wharf nine. Do you want to meet me at the old Chelsea Pier? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How often do you actually say stuff out loud? Yeah, you want to give me the Durex Sharp party pack? Uh, yeah, because I'm a spunky caller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my. But it's either it either means uh, someone's si- sitting next to you, you're in a movie, or you're really stupid, or you're you're, you're buying time. You're trying you're trying buying water. time or dumb. I yeah. realize dumb people repeat punchlines out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah, Shirley. Mm-hmm. Well, it's again, they're trying to buy time to digest the joke. Right. All right. Who's next to you? Who's next to me? My boyfriend. All right. Stop repeating what Adam asks you. He's going to declare you. Mm, I, 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 I will strip you of your party pack. Oh, fine. And and bid you good day. <laughs> so what's going on? I want to know where the male G-spot is. And there I want is, to know how to find it. There isn't one. God bless there you for looking. There isn't one. That's a no. lie. There isn't one. <laughs> there isn't one. Now, some, some men, and I mean a small minority... Like their prostate massaged, and mm. it's sort of, an, and there are some, and there's, and there's a larger uh, minority that like the sort of outside of the uh, tukai and stimulate it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's very unusual to like things put up there. That's mm-hmm. unusual. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. So do, do not do not believe the the crap that's in the women's magazines about that. <laughs> All right, all right, spunky. She started off spunky, but she got a little drunky <laughs> later on in yes. the call. Yes. All right, we're still going to give her the party pack. Why not? I'll give her, I'll give her the party pack because she's 18 and named Shirley. Does she need, yeah. And there's nobody named 18 named Shirley anymore. Uh, so hang on, and don't hang up on Shirley. I'll give her that uh, party pack. Greg. Hey, what's up? 
What's happening? Yeah, um, I have this question for Drew. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have a uh, condition called retarded ejaculation. Not retrograde, but retarded. I'm going retrograde. You mean retrograde? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, they put it down as retarded ejaculation. So, I mean, it takes you forever to have an orgasm. Uh, yeah. If at all. Okay. And so, if like, they. I've gotten like to the point like to where it feels like a whole lot of irritation. Right. And then it hurts for a long time. It hurts for like four or five hours. And My goodness. Well, that, that's the, the list of problems that can cause that is huge. Are you, are you getting a workup done? Uh, yes, I'm going in. Uh, I mean, everything up. from, from uh, do, uh, abnormalities of the ducts that lead out of the, the, the seminal vesicles mm -hmm. to abnormalities of the testes to abnormalities of semen production to abnormalities of hormonal. Are you otherwise normal in terms of height, stature, hair distribution, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'm six one, so... And you got normal hair everywhere. Yeah, normal hair and normal everything. Hmm. And if you were you ever able to ejaculate more normally? Uh, I'd say like a long time ago when I was like fourteen or so. Uh oh, Ooh, have you been smoking right? pot every day or something since then, or doing something uh, bad no, for yourself? I've never smoked pot. And anything you've been doing bad to yourself? Uh, Steroids? No. All right. So when was the last time you ejaculated normally? Normally, um, I'd have to say the fourteen. Okay. And how about no, just the last yeah, time you did it? I don't mean normally. I just mean the last time something came out. Um, okay. Uh, I'd say like a year ago. It was like you a ever, small. It was, it, it was a small, like, kind of, like, flow of clear, crystal do you, clear. Do you have a normal sex drive? Uh, yes. And do you have orgasms without ejaculating? Uh, mm. Kind of, but not really. Mm. Like, well, this is going to take some work. Is it gonna take, so you're going to need uh, an MRI. I mean, this is going to take some time. you got to see a urologist and probably a neurologist. And mm -hmm. It's going to mm -hmm. take a while. Wow. Yeah, you got to go get checked out. Yeah. That is, right. That's an organic problem causing that. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, not, that's not depressed. At, it's not depressed at 21, and that's no, not no, anything no. at 21. That's no. just there's something going Biological on. Biological going on. Yeah. Spinal cord tumors, a lot of different things. All right. We've got something very weird going on with our phone carrier here. Yeah, that's we, all right. We can't put them on hold, Anderson. That's all right. Put my one on well, hold. We take, we'll take a break. We'll take a break, yeah. All right, Greg. Godspeed to you. Good, Good luck. luck. I would like to have given, given that Durex party pack, but what's he going to do with the condoms? There you go, see? He doesn't need them. Nothing's coming out. Well, at four hours, he's going to wear a hole in one of those things before actually something actually comes Been out. A year since something came out. Yeah. No? <laughs> you all right? You okay, Adam? A year. No. I know. I mean, I just, you know, I'm not a man of passion, but one who's absorbed some of your passion. Well, no, on uh, my uh, Discovery Health show, the Strictly Sex show, we had a urologist on where I said, look, what if you had a man that wasn't uh, ejaculated? It's like, oh, oh, my goodness. I mean, that's, you know, stuff's not coming out of him. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a biological problem. we got to work that up. Basically. All right, especially 21. Yeah. I'll take a quick break. Be right back after this. If you need help. Call Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Yeah. Little band we like to call System. And that's because we're tight. You guys <laughs> know them as System of a Down. Yeah. John beating them skins. All right. Let's uh, get back to the phone. So we say there, Drew. There we go. Talk to uh, Callie. Callie. Callie 16. Callie? Yeah. What's up? Um, I was raped three days ago, and yeah. I took the day after pill, but I'm kind of scared, and I don't know if it's going to work right. Well, it, if you take it within 24 hours, it's over 80% effective at preventing a pregnancy. Who raped you? I, my uncle's friend was over here, and my uncle really trusts him, but oh. I ended up drinking quite a bit, and I passed out. Did you report this to anybody? Yeah, it's already been reported to the police. Excellent. Well how, done. How, oh, good. How old is your uncle's friend? 41. 41. And, uh, Eesh. what, well, first off, what the... You know, here's what happens. Here's what happens with uh, these white trash broods is mm -hmm. everyone starts crashing at everyone's place, mm -hmm. you know, uncles and uncles' buddies, and everyone's oh. just sleeping over in the same 
1,200 square foot house, Dish. and then there's booze, and then there's trouble. No. Why, why is your uncle sleeping over there, and why is he sleeping over there with his friend? Or, no, I live with my uncle. Uh oh. Now, now it's worse. And did your uncle find out about this? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, what's he think about it? He was very pissed off. Yeah, he didn't good. think his friend would do that. Yeah, I didn't, and... I didn't even think so. That's why I thought it would be okay. Were you a virgin before that? No. No. Why are you living with your uncle, though? Because that's going to help... My mom passed things. away a year and a half ago, and I was living with my friend, but... What'd your mom die from? A cirrhosis of the liver and hepatitis. Oh, uh, boy. So she was an alcoholic? A, yeah, alcohol, oh, drug hepatitis. Alcohol, yeah, drug yeah. addict. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Well. Yeah. Wow. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, quite a little bit. I'm going to go with a lot. Quite a little bit. Well, yeah, when sad. she had me, she quit doing the hard drugs. Yeah, but, but she kept drinking. Yes. And that's what happens with hepatitis C, chronic hepatitis C. Oh, the you, liver. Oh, you, you drink on chronic, liver. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she yeah, throws the liver failure. Yeah. If she drank on chronic hepatitis C. So you could, you C, could, you could not bad. have hepatitis and drink and probably get away. Your liver could get away with it until you're 60. Yeah. But if you have hepatitis, done, you're going to go at 35. You're done for, yeah. It's yeah. Toast. Because hepatitis goes after your liver and the booze goes after it. It's like right. eating Tylenol and drinking every night. It, it's way worse. Well, the, but, but what I mean is, is you, no, it's, it's synergistic. You've ratchet, ratcheted up the level. It is, but put it this way. It, women, although they're five times more likely than men to get cirrhosis, could drink their whole life and not get cirrhosis. Women are five times yep. more likely yep. than, than men? men. Mm -hmm. we're five, five times. Five times. Never they, hear about that. Yeah, they lack an enzyme in their stomach called the set aldehyde dehydrogenase. Yeah, that, it's uh, the one that makes them good at math, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is there but, an enzyme but, that makes you good at math? Here's it. If you have chronic hepatitis C and you drink, you are going to get cirrhosis, period. End of story. I don't have it. I've already been tested. Good, good. All right. Good. All no, right. I wasn't, wasn't speaking to you, though, sort of more oh. to the, he meant the, one. the powers that be. Yeah. Uh, so you reported this to the police. Yeah. Oh, where's your dad? Or should I even ask? I don't have a dad. Yeah. All right. And Kelly, where'd you get the morning after pill? My cousin had it. She moved to Utah, and when she left, she left um, all of her stuff, and she had it in her stuff. I found it in her top drawer. To, to which one? Plan B? Yeah. Uh, it's always a bad sign when you move and you leave all your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's more like fleeing. That's what you do when your village is on fire, right. not when you're going to college. <laughs> right. You flee. You well, flee. There's a difference between fleeing and moving. She had, she went to go live with her boyfriend, so. And flee. She fleed her parents. decided one evening to <laughs> head out? I mean. No, he called her and said he wanted her to move out there and that he missed her and she just left. She didn't bother packing up her <laughs> She <laughs> packed stuff? most of it. She packed yeah. what she needed. All right. Well, yeah, a little sack I with wish a, you would have poke it outside. A little rucksack. Yeah, I wish you would have taken that plan B, but now I'm glad you got it. But wait a minute. If you went to the police, didn't they take you to social services or emergency room or whatnot? Well, I kind of didn't. You know how you get sore after you have sex if you're not used to it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't get sore until after I talked to the police like the next day. Yeah, but Callie, as part no, of the... That's not what we're talking about. Part of the forensic examination in order to build a case, yeah, they have to collect now, okay, evidence. Okay, now there's something wrong. Right. What did you tell the police? Did you tell them you were raped? I didn't know because I blacked out. Why did you go to the police then? My uncle called them. For what? To report it. Report what? You blacked out? You didn't know anything? Well, he thought something went on. Why did he... Is it getting bogus on me? Is it getting no. bogus? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just getting it's getting victim. Uh, it's getting stupid. No, I'm victim -y. not a bogus caller. I listen to your no. guys' show all the time. All right, and I all right, thought, all right. but 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 hold on a second. You, the police were called were summoned to the home. Yes. Yes. Um, Why? What? What tipped your uncle off? He found me passed out without pants on. Ah. Okay. Okay. He called the police. The police showed up, but you didn't tell the police you had sex with anyone. I didn't really. Because this happened before, and I didn't really. No, guess. no. All right, hold on a second. See, this is. It's coming into it's coming into focus for me because yeah. when you said when we said three minutes ago on the call, oh, you went to the police. Oh, good oh, for good, you. Yeah. I thought, no, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. She this didn't poor go. chick who's been victimized her whole life yeah. with the alcoholic mom, yeah, and the yeah. drugs, and the apps and dad and stuff. Her just picking herself up and going to the cops after being right. victimized this way did not make sense right. at all to there me. But I just said, screw it. Did the right thing. Let's keep moving. Yeah. Didn't make sense. Now the cops showing up at the house yeah. or at the trailer, yeah. that makes sense to me. How dare you? 
and her not filling them in on what went on. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what didn't make sense uh, four minutes ago now makes perfect sense. So you never actually reported the rape to the police? No. Okay. I did now? the first time, but nothing happened, so I didn't this time. I, I don't know what that means. She means the last time this kind of thing happened to her. That's what it I It happened assuming. three months ago, and there now it go. happened again. All right. Okay, and I, I should suspect it will keep happening. Yeah, you got to be careful. Okay, you need to get some help. Careful. Callie, you got to get help, baby. You, you, you've you shown a tiny bit of um, willingness to come to your own defense. That was by taking that morning after pill and not just sort of letting things happen. Well, it's because I don't want a baby. I know, but you 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 came to your own defense that way. Let that be the beginning of a whole procedure that you follow, where you get help, get support, start taking care of yourself. Just Callie, like a little, come little, on. tiny step forward. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry for what's happened to you, but now you're going to have to take control of your life and get yourself some help. Yeah, I'm doing counseling. I do group, and I do uh, good. All right, well, you do the one on one. Good. All right, good, good. Keep it going. Tell them what happened. They may need to still need to report it just to sort of get you used to defending yourself. Yeah. Nothing will happen. Right. It's still important that you come to your own defense. It is so amazing when stuff doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, but it just it didn't make sense for a second that this voice that this victim with the uncle and the alcohol and the old guy and would everything just would just pick up and go to the police. Just did not for a heartbeat did it fit. Yep. And uh, now we don't like the profile. No, of course that's not. A, That's a horrible thing. <laughs> It's, it's, it's horrible to profile unless you actually want to get some results or try to or base, understand people or understand people or try to figure out something that might happen before the tragedy right, right, happens. Right. Other than that, it, other than those things, why would you? Yeah, other than trying not to get uh, swarthy guys from the Middle East to fly airplanes into the sides and of or victims to be victimized by victims, or, or to be victimized. victimizers. And, and, yeah, profiling's horrible unless you want to prevent that stuff from happening in advance. Yes. Other than that, it's a horrible horrible thing that shouldn't be tolerated yes. by society except for the part we actually save tons of people's lives and you save people from being victimized over and over again other than that horrible thing it's profile so that's really the one thing you could say for it the one thing you might be able to say for profiling other than that is uh the folks at world trade center may still be around but other than that there's really nothing you could say about it so it's a bad thing yes oh of course that's, i don't know. I you dare can't you. do it it's impossible you. it's like judging. say good day judging is like profiling it's like, <laughs> but both impossible to do <laughs> all right all right anyway We'll be back. If you need help, call Loveline. 1 800 Love 191. <laughs> That's the show, everyone. Thanks for tagging along. Eddie Griffin from uh, Deuce Bigelow coming in a little bit uh, later this week. That's yeah, fine. And then right? Rob Schneider, too. And right? then Rob Schneider. Oh, well, maybe uh, that's next week, right? Pennywise, this week? This is this week. Yeah. All right. Rob Thursday. Oh, Rob Thursday. That's right. All right. So, until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I choose to be a blowhard <laughs> who has no actual information, you see? <laughs> This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, the sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.